The knives finally came out at last night's Democratic presidential debate, and a good amount of the blades were thrown at the newbie on stage, Michael Bloomberg, or some like to call him Mini Mike. Elizabeth Warren pretty much destroyed him twice. First, with her brief summary that concludes all of the video footage that has come out of late, exposing Michael Bloomberg. I'd like to talk about who we're running against. A billionaire who calls women fat broads and horse-faced lesbians. And no, I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm talking about Mayor Bloomberg. <laughs> Democrats are not going to win if we have a nominee who has a history of hiding his tax returns, of harassing women, and of supporting racist policies like redlining and stop and frisk. Look, I'll support who whoever the Democratic nominee is. But understand this, Democrats take a huge risk if we just substitute one arrogant billionaire for another. Pete Buttigieg even added his own addition, not wanting the people of the U.S. to have to choose between someone who wants to burn the Democratic Party down and someone who wants to buy it. And most Americans don't see where they fit if they've got to choose between a socialist who thinks that capitalism is the root of all evil and a billionaire who thinks that money ought to be the, the root of all power. I have to say, Perfect Pete's assessment is pretty fair. This George Soros-like character, Michael Bloomberg, has spent billions in his aim to create his desired version of America. Bloomberg has given at least $5.6 million to the New York University School of Law's State Energy and Environment Impact Center which trains mid-career lawyers under the guise of being research fellows in how to effectively push progressive policy goals in the court and then have them placed throughout the nation in attorney general offices to push Bloomberg's agenda for saving the planet. But it doesn't end there. Mini Mike spent around $100 million in the 2018 midterm elections to help the Democrats win the House of Representatives. So he has some of them at his bidding. Michael Bloomberg even has his name embedded in organizations, whether it's on the surface of Bloomberg News that bows to Chinese censorship or every town for gun safety that helped turn Virginia blue. Yet still the truth holds that collectively Americans won't be bought. A highlight of this was seen on Monday when the House bill that would have violated the Second Amendment rights of Virginians failed in the Virginia State Judiciary Committee. As 10 knows 5, the motion carries. The bill will be carried over for the year. A letter will go to the Crime Commission to study it. Thank you, Delegate Levine. Thank Appreciate you, Mr. Chairman. It. Thank you all for being here. And thank each side for your respectfulness. So that $1 billion that will be spent before Election Day by Michael Bloomberg to buy out the presidency for the left will be wasted. But hey, look at it this way. Some Americans were made really happy during Bloomberg's run, where they're being vastly overpaid to be a staffer, a supporter online, or getting the chance to walk away with a laptop and iPhone. It'll be interesting to see how much longer Bloomberg lasts and what more damage he can do. On the debate stage, he was able to take on Bernie in a relatively non-aggressive manner. He made it clear that Bernie can't just go and destroy the insurance plans of the people of the United States who are happy with their plans and think that they will elect him to do that. That's a problem for Bernie, especially with the unions. The Culinary Union of Nevada is afraid of Bernie Sanders' new nationalized Medicare for All plan that would take away the robust benefits. So that powerful union who has a strong voice in Nevada is choosing not to endorse any candidate. I mean, would you trust a guy who doesn't even know the cost of his own Medicare plan to take care of you? I wouldn't. And there are some other unions out there that are wary of drastic new changes, like United Mine Workers, who are afraid of not being able to put food on the table because of the Green New Deal candidate who idealistically wants to transition secure workers out of millions of jobs. Also, Bernie wants to take money from the billionaires like Bloomberg to make sure that others are taken care of. Oh yeah, but that's right. Bloomberg is the corrupt individual that got the Democrats in power. So rightfully so, Bloomberg told Bernie not to complain. Bernie and the Dems could have changed the tax system to take more from the wealthy, but they didn't. Billionaires today, if you can believe it, have an effective tax rate lower than the middle class. So Senator, maybe you're just the tax code. Why are you complaining? Who <coughs> wrote the code? 
You, you and did. Your, you and your you campaign. And the con- you and your camp. Not me. Oh, you on. and your campaign contributions, electing people who represent the wealthy and the powerful. Yes, those are the folks, Democrats. Thank those you. Are, well, and Republicans too. But the best part of the night. Bloomberg's big moment was after Bernie doxed himself. What a wonderful country we have. The best known socialist in the country happens to be a millionaire with three houses. What I miss here? Well, you'll miss that I work in Washington, House One. That's the first problem. Live in Burlington, House Two. That's good. And like thousands of other Vermonters, I do have a summer but, camp. Forgive me for that. But, Where is your home? But, which tax Which tax haven New do you York, have your home? New York City, thank you very much. Well, Finally, someone had the guts to call Bernie Sanders out on his hypocrisy. My observations are that Bloomberg is short and to the point, and he avoids getting into drama and what he deems to be unnecessaries. This is advantageous. Elizabeth Warren fought him really well. She put pressure on him to let his alleged victims of his sexist and misogynistic behavior speak for themselves. The mayor has to stand on his record. And what we need to know is exactly what's lurking out there. He has gotten some number of women, dozens, who knows, to sign non-disclosure agreements, both for sexual harassment and for gender discrimination in the workplace. So, Mr. Mayor, are you willing to release all of those women from those non-disclosure agreements so we can hear their side of the story? But it didn't seem to give her any glory as she writhes disingenuous. It looks like Bernie will last if he doesn't get too discouraged by the media's targeted questions and the DNC's ever-changing rules. And in the end, Pete Buttigieg may ride on to glory as the manufactured dark horse candidate he seems to be. Reporting from Hawaii, I'm Abigail Hammond for Rebel News. Like and subscribe to never miss a video.